Good morning, everybody. Thanks for taking the time to uh, join us with this Aviation Summit for um, the City of Phoenix Aviation Department. Uh, glad you could make it. Uh, my name is Candace Huff. I'm the Deputy Aviation Director for Design and Construction Services um, for the City of Phoenix and the Aviation Department. Uh, next. Uh, below is my contact information, uh, email, and main phone number. Uh, you can reach me at those anytime. Next. I have um, two key staff members that work with me uh, at the airport. Ward Helm is an engineer, a special projects administrator for us, uh, and there's his contact information. Uh, Ward uh, typically oversees a lot of our vertical projects, so the development of those, you know, for Sky Harbor, Deer Valley, and for Goodyear. Next. Uh, the second person is Ann Kurtenbach. She's also, also a special project administrator for our division. Um, Ann's uh, focus over the last many years has been our SkyTrain project, in addition to assisting on our Terminal 3 modernization. So there's her contact information as well. Next. So in design and construction services, what we do, who we are, how we do it, and some upcoming projects that you may or may not be aware of. Uh, and if you have questions following this summit, be, feel free to reach out either to us or through the folks on these calls and we can provide information that you may need. Next. So what we do. Next. Our mission is to, to deliver world-class aviation facilities in an environmentally responsible manner that exceeds our customer and stakeholders expectations. Um, always, as we do our work, we try to or attempt to uh, incorporate in our, our processes, minimizing impacts to disruption, you know, disrupting airport operations, as well as um, the functions that happen in our terminals and curbs. Next. What does DCS do? We manage all design and construction projects for the three airports in the city of Phoenix system, Phoenix Sky Harbor, Deer Valley, and Goodyear Airport. Next. And we do that while managing scope, schedule, and budget, always with the quality of projects and work at the forefront of our mission. Next. What does DCS do? We provide project leadership. Next. We oversee project management um, to lead all of our teams, designers and contractors, and then our stakeholders um, to the finish line with our project implementation. Next. Next, we procure and negotiate and then manage all design contracts. Next, and all construction contracts necessary to implement the work for our division, our department. Next, some of the recent successes that we've had, you may have seen information about this with our Terminal 2 sunsetting and then getting demolished. Um, there was a mural up, an art mural, Paul Coe's mural that went up with the original T2 construction. Um, if you didn't know where it was located, it was, as you're um, looking south, it was up to the west above um, where the checkpoint queuing was. So a little bit further out of reach than the current location, but still uh, beautiful and available. We relocated it out to the rental car center in the center core on the third level. A little bit more accessible. We also have some interactive visualization and some uh, project information, the original mural uh, information details. So if you're out at the rental car center, take a minute to go look at it. It's, it's quite beautiful. Next. Another one is Envision Gold, which uh, has to do with sustainability. The Envision Award is more related to horizontal projects. So the civil side of things, so the grading and drainage and elements in landscaping that we uh, incorporate into our projects uh, toward a sustainable uh, project and infrastructure for the airport. Next. Also, Engineering News Record Award of Merit for the T3 concourse modernization. If you ever had the pleasure of traveling through Terminal 3 before the modernization and the extreme pleasure at what it looks like these days and how um, much easier it is to navigate and the open feel of it, it's, it's beautiful. So uh, that was a recent award and recent success that uh, we're proud to talk about. Next. 
Also, the eighth and final concourse on Terminal 4, South um, Concourses, uh, that one opened almost a year ago. It was June of 2022. Um, we got an engineer, Engineering News Record Award for the Best Aviation Transit Project in Terminal 4. Um, also, some beautiful art elements in that. So if you're ever in Terminal 4, um, use the connector bridges. And if you've got some extra, extra time, head over there and have a look. It's, it's, we're quite proud of that project as well. Next. Um, we manage, next, quite a few projects here at the airport, about $320 million a year. And we have various projects of delivery between job order contracting, design build, low bid, and construction manager at risk, totaling a to total capital budget of $2.8 billion. Next. Um, various delivery methods that we use to traditional design bid build, so low bid projects. We still do low bid at the airports, all three of our airports. When we're in areas where we have a little bit less impact, maybe on operations, uh, and we have the ability to turn a project into land side and have more control of it, um, we will tend to go toward low bid. Uh, if we have constraints being on our airfield, if there are safety and security concerns, if there are major operational concerns, for instance, a runway reconstruction, or um, in the heart of our airport where we're building a concourse out onto the active uh, air side, we'll um, choose to use CM at risk or design build. Um, some of the pros and cons of those are you can enter into the design process and as you're evolving the design process, you may be able to bid portions of it and work with your contractor in a constructability um, avenue to be able to uh, deliver a better project uh, that meets the needs of your stakeholders, plus um, maybe timing some of the deliverables that happen throughout the process instead of having to fully develop the design and then low bid it out on the street. Next. We do analyze and pick the best delivery method to utilize based on the impacts, the costs, schedules, um, and some various other methods uh, working with our uh, stakeholder divisions. Next. We procure our design and contractors through qualification-based selection process. Um, Streets Procurement manages that for, the, for us, and I think Deborah Russell will be on after me to talk about their process and enlighten you a little bit more about that. Um, next. The only one that is not qualification-based is our low bid mechanism. So that is solely based on bids. So designing all, during all phases of design and construction, we manage the scope, schedule, and budget, again, focused on quality to deliver our projects uh, in, a, in an effective manner to our stakeholders and uh, the tenants that are operating in and around our airports. Next. Next. We manage project scope. So early on in the project, if we can, if we're using alternative project, we'll try and engage the contractor as soon as we can during the design process to help with constructability, help with estimating. Uh, also our designer meeting through various stakeholder meetings and uh, facilitated reviews, we try to identify clearly what the scope of the projects are so that we don't have uh, gaps in the scope and that we actually deliver the projects to our stakeholders as scripted initially. Next. Next. We also manage our schedules. We require weekly look-aheads as well as monthly, pro monthly project schedule updates, which we review with on our larger projects, we have an in-house, uh, a third-party scheduler that helps us look at critical path schedules. Uh, but we also do have an in-house scheduler that helps us review our projects to uh, coordinate them and ensure that we're staying on track with the delivery. Next. Next. Managing the budget, we require milestone estimates as we design the process. And then we utilize third-party estimators or firms to help us analyze the deliverables, help us analyze the GMP and the, the costs, and then we reconcile between our contractors and our third-party estimators uh, with the designer at the table as well, discussing the design uh, assumptions. We also have a change control process for all added scope that is an official required process um, from contractor and designer through the airport. Uh, and once approved, it is then tracked and uh, managed. 
Next. We manage the quality of a project. We also have inspectors that are City of Phoenix inspectors that help us ensure that our projects are safe, that our, we're minimizing the impacts to the traveling public, to our tenants, um, and provide uh, that ability to communicate back to the contractor and designer improvements or uh, embellishments to what we feel we need on our uh, projects to keep them safe and ensure quality. We also have third-party commissioning agents that help us with some of the special systems, for instance, elevators, escalators, mechanical systems, uh, any of our controls that also, and bag handling systems that help us ensure that what's been designed is actually constructed and then functions the way it needs to um, upon delivery. Next. Next. We manage the communication process. So we do uh, identify stakeholders early on in our projects and then key stakeholders who we uh, have as part of our entire design and construction process. Um, throughout the development of our, our process, we regularly communicate through our meetings, through meeting minutes, through um, process management, you know, forms and um, checklists. So we value communication and hold it pretty high in the way we approach our projects to help them be effective. Next, we manage the project risks. So clearly to manage them, you have to try and identify them. So through historical information, we have a, a good idea of some, but there, you can't manage everything or you can't identify everything early on. Something that does go a long way and helps us is a clear scope definition as we plan our projects. And then from that scope uh, definitions, we get into estimating and estimate our projects early on uh, during the planning process. That helps us manage scope creep, creep during design. Um, if you clearly identify your scope, then hopefully you minimize the uh, gaps in the design and gaps in uh, what the stakeholders needs are so that you can manage the uh, additional scope ads that tend to come along. Timely decision making is key during the design phase. Uh, sometimes, like I said, we do over the shoulder reviews and engage our stakeholders to help with those decision making processes as well as everybody's busy. So if we can carve out a little bit of time to bring people into a room to collaborate uh, and get decisions, we try and try and implement that as much as possible because um, as I said, everybody is busy and this is one mechanism to ensure that we are getting feedback. We provide access to our work during construction phase. So if we have stakeholders that um, are interested in seeing the project process or have key input, we take them around, we allow them access so that they can visually see and look into how the project is progressing both for design and construction as we implement it to help us identify gaps or issues that uh, come up during construction. Next. And there are always unforeseen site conditions during construction. I know everybody would like to assume that there aren't, but uh, in our best efforts we try to as we abandon utilities, remove them whenever possible. Uh, at times our tenants are out there or other contractors that we aren't in control of. And so if we get into areas that they have been in uh, or that we have in past projects and didn't completely remove underground facilities, or uh, maybe there is some underground development that you didn't discover until you're actually under construction. So we do, try to track those and manage those during the construction phase. Um, we strive to foster teamwork. So it's very important at the airport. Um, we collaborate and encourage that team approach and collaboration. It helps us early on identify pr priorities. And in doing that, we can help um, minimize conflict as we evolve with our projects and all of those elements the owner, the designer, the project manager, and the contractor working together as a team collaboratively um, lead to good project success. Next. So that cohesive team ensures project, project success. So we aim for that target every time we do projects here at the airport. Uh, in some of our recent projects, we have been uh, accepting or 
chasing federally funded money that goes with the bipartisan infrastructure law. So the bill money has made America requirements that are a little bit beyond what the Buy American requirements are as part of the FAA advisory circulars. It just expands those standards to require use of American made iron steel construction materials and manufactured product products. So I just wanted to mention the fact that um, with the bill money involved, we do continue to track and manage and monitor so that we can report to the FAA and ensure audit capabilities for them related to the grant funding. Next. So a few of our upcoming projects at Phoenix Deer Valley and Goodyear are, next, medium to large projects at Phoenix, um, reconstruction of Terminal 3 Outer Apron. We are looking to possibly go out for a design procurement later this year, fall, winter, more likely winter, and that is totally dependent on the FAA and their funding cycle and uh, where other grant funding is going. So. Just continue to monitor our sites or streets procurement page for uh, advertisements related to that. West Air Cargo is designed. It is going to be a low bid project that we are putting on the street uh, later this spring, early summer. T4 infrastructure improvements, elevators, escalators, moving walks. We implemented and procured phase one. Phase two is going to have grant funding associated with it. So we are looking, as soon as we identify the grant funding, looking to go on the street for procurement for a design builder on the next phase. This one, as I said, will have additional requirements related to the FAA funding that the first phase did not. Next. Subcontract, subcontracting opportunities. I did just want to mention that we have had several large projects recently out on the street. So there could be subcontracting opportunities out and around uh, Crossfield Taxiway U with Kiwit. They are the prime contractor on that project. It is a CMAR um, and that is on the west end of the airport. So it has some vertical elements to it because we're um, impacting cargo building. There are roadway elements, there are utility elements. Uh, it's a very comprehensive project. Uh, we're looking forward to getting that one underway. Terminal 4 bag handling system upgrades uh, to the explosive detection system. White's is the prime contractor on that that is also a CMAR. Um, so any specialized equipment, belts, uh, etc. that have to do with the explosive detection system, um, there could be subcontracting opportunities there as well. Phoenix Utility Vault Upgrade and Infield Paving. Banneke is the prime contractor with this project. It's on our South Airfield and it's the last bit of uh, paving our infields uh, in and around the center runway between the center and south runway and also raising utility vaults to help with the drainage and collection of material in them. Terminal 3, new north concourse and 2, both package 1 and package 3 uh, are have been solicited so the announcements are happening package one is the relocation of the security gate and uh, an operation that is currently located on the site called seapoint or uh, american airlines mail sort facility um, we are hiring a cmar and a designer for that one there could be subcontracting or uh, subcontracting opportunities uh, those announcements, I believe, have been made on the street's webpage. Um, we're in the process of getting contracts in place now. And package one will be something that's constructed on the east end of our airport. Package three is actually the main concourse and the associated apron. So a CMAR for that and a designer for that as well. Next. So this is kind of the general location of the projects. Taxiway U is off to the west of the airport and West Air Cargo that will be a low bid project. T3 Outer Apron uh, is pending grant funding before we get out on the street with that one. And then T3 N2, that's the site. Um, just to the right of where the purple is, is where the relocated security gate and um, C point will go. Uh, and then T4 infrastructure improvements are in the core of, the, of Terminal 4. And then the utility vaults, you can see those um, center around the center runway. Upcoming Deer Valley construction projects, small projects, Deer Valley blast pads. That is designed. We are looking to bid that low bid uh, spring summer. Uh, it is an ADOT funded project. Uh, in addition is reconstruction of taxi taxiway C connectors that has been designed or is under design. 
Uh, we are looking to request from the FAA the ability to use CMAR. That's in process right now. If we are unsuccessful, it will be low bid. Um, the design process has just started. Look to those two. They, they will be tied to the grant funding. It most likely will come out in pairs. So it might be a C4, C5 connector project and then C6, C7 and etc. Again, tied to the grant funding. So if it's low bid, it could be various different contractors. If it's CMAR, most likely we will have the CMAR um, in step with the designer to construct all of the connectors, but it will be over multiple years from the fact that it would be associated with grant funding. Medium construction projects, relocation of taxiway B and the connectors. The contractor is Banneke. Uh, we are looking to start construction this summer. It most likely is going to be split into two phases, again, tied to what the FAA will fund. Um, so it is taking taxiway B and shifting it south away from the north runway in its current alignment. Well, those are locations of those projects. So the C connectors are the sort of yellowish colors. Uh, the blast pads are off the ends of each of the two runways. And then the taxiway B along with connectors shifts south from the existing alignment and then ties into the existing north runway. Some projects at Goodyear, small projects, infield design, infield paving. We have a designer selected. Uh, most likely the construction of that will happen sometime summer or fall. We are just uh, getting underway with the design. Uh, and then also a new apron and taxiway connector. It is designed and awaiting grant funding to uh, low bid that project, most likely spring, summer, uh, coming up to do bids for that project. Medium construction project, Goodyear apron. Um, the aprons that are out there date back to when the Navy uh, occupied this facility before the city of Phoenix purchased it. So uh, the aprons are probably 60, 70 years old, built in the 40s. Uh, and so uh, we're going to need to reconstruct those in sequence and they will be packaged depending on the funding. Uh, so designer selection could happen this winter. 2023, again, tied to grant funding associated with it and its availability. Next. So the purple or bluish color is the infield paving locations. Most likely we will start at one end, so probably the southwest end and work toward the northeast end, doing it in sequence, uh, again, tied to how much grant funding is available. The orange apron is the low bid apron that will tie into taxiway A. And then the apron rehab, uh, where it connects into that new apron at the orange-green interface, that will most likely be the first piece of the concrete apron. And it won't be that apron in its entirety. Most likely it will be split into two or three pieces that would be associated with available grant funding. Next. Tips for competitive process. Don't wait to the deadline. Start early. Make sure that you have all of your information together. It's clear, it's concise, but don't wait until the deadline. Read the document. So read the request for qualifications clearly. Answer the questions that they're asking for in the RFQ. Usually it's a series of four or five, six questions with detail associated with it. Make sure that you answer all of the elements. Usually the reviews of those is looking for the points to be made. Um, so if it's clear, if it's concise, if it's easy to read for people to address, you know, the questions and then your answers, it, it helps for uh, a better competitive process. Attend the pre-submittal. Do attend those because that is your last one and only opportunity to engage airport employees for the details of the project. So if you're confused about things, if you're confused about the RFQ, what it is asking for you to put into your statement of qualification, attend the pre-submittal. It goes a long way toward answering your questions and helping you to be successful in your um, endeavors. Make your proposal easy to read and follow. Um, it, it's difficult if it's one page and continuous text that's one huge paragraph. Um, it, it's easier if you break it up into small pieces, maybe use illustrations that are um, developing your concept. Just make it easy to uh, look at the information, cipher, decipher the information, and pull out what is necessary to answer the questions in the, SO, in the RFQ. Next. 
Uh, skyharbor.com is one avenue to uh, be able to access information about our solicitations. We do have a link on that website that takes you to Streets Procurement, which is where design and construction services, our division, implements all of our work. We work under the guise of the city engineer. So all of our processes are um, scripted by Title 34 and the city engineer. So you may have already heard from Michael Hughes. Um, they a lot of times deal with goods and services, um, concessions, and other other type solicitations that are under an administrative regulation. That's not us. We do the professional services as far as designers and contractors uh, under the city engineer. Next. So their site is solicitations.phoenix.gov under the city of Phoenix website. Um, and that is where most of the active solicitations and where our past awards are located. Next. We're on Facebook, we're on Twitter. Come and visit us. Thank you. I think that's it. Good morning and um, happy to be part of this event with you. And this is the continuation of all things design and construction. And so this is the steps to winning that construction, that designer construction job and uh, being presented to you by the design and construction procurement section of the Office of City Engineer. Next. I'm Deborah Russell, contract specialist to team lead. And I am for the design and construction procurement section under the leadership of the Office of City Engineer. And Eric Froberg is our city engineer. And of course, we have a great um, staff that works uh, under all, both myself, um, Candy Kowalski, and um, Kevin Query uh, for the design and construction procurement section. Next. And um, for our agenda today, we're just going to give you a little bit of a brief overview of the design and construction procurement and some helpful information. And so um, newsletter and navigation websites, we'll talk a little bit about signing up for the newsletter and helpful links, methods of procurement, uh, design delivery methods or delivery methods of professional services and construction services, bid and S SOQ submittal tips for you to be in the know and um, for our capital improvement program 2022 through 2027, it's five year budget. And um, wow, the panel. And so this is for submittals and interviews. And then getting feedback, we'll talk a little bit about debriefs, public records requests, selection panel training, uh, participation. Next. First off, we have our design and construction procurement newsletter. You might hear me say DCP, and so that's our acronym for Design and Construction Procurement. Um, it offers information on project advertisements and other app, um, items of interest, such as there are clickable links for contracting, contacting our contract specialists, any debriefs that you might want to request, public records requests, and also panel selection participation and important notices. And the panel selection participation um, we offer that on a quarterly basis. And for the newsletter itself, it goes out via email on Mondays around lunchtime. And if Monday is a holiday, then it goes out on a Tuesday. So if you haven't signed up for our newsletter, please do. Next. So this is our um, city's web main web page. And so by clicking the doing business in Phoenix, followed by contracting with the city, then you can scroll down by, like, this is a whole lot of stuff here, but anyway, but you can uh, then scroll down and by clicking on view current city solicitations, it will take you to the solicitations webpage, or you can also click on view solicitations and awards and recommendations for results. And then also under this area here, contracting with the city is where you can find the link to sign up for the newsletter um, and so it is at the very uh, bottom bullet there where it says subscribe to notifications of upcoming design and construction projects. Next. Um, under solicitations, the clickable link is where you can easily look up a project being advertised 
and the associated attachments. You can look up projects by entering the title, the project number, the NIGP code, or department. And if you don't know the RFX number, you can type in 60,000, which uh, there's a sample there, uh, previous slide please, um, which represents our design and construction procurement beginning code number. And it will bring up all design and construction uh, projects. And then for results of solicitations, you wanna click on the tabs and awards and recommendations that's also up at the blue uh, tab bar next. So as mentioned on the previous slide, by entering the title project number in IGP code or the department to find a project, it will bring you to here where you will find all pertinent information and documents uploaded for that project. You can click on any of the attachments to open and view, such as the RFQ, addendums, notifications, uh, pre-submittal or pre-bid um, attendance and other information there. Next. Vendor registration. All contractors and consultants must be registered as a City of Phoenix vendor to submit on a project. If you are registered, you should periodically check the accuracy of your information. And if you haven't registered yet, it only takes about two business days to become registered. They're pretty quick through the process. And um, if you have any type of issues, contact the vendor help desk. If you have any issues with passwords or in vendor information, or there's things that you need to update in your vendor registration. Otherwise, for all other issues or issues with the Procure Phoenix portal, please contact the contracts specialist that is assigned um, to that specific project that you're um, trying to participate on. Next. Now we get into a little bit of some good stuff here for methods of procurement. Next. So the delivery methods that we use is professional services and construction services. Aviation, fire, library, parks, street transportation, water services, and all other departments procure through design and construction procurement. Under professional services, there are six services for advertisements or services that utilize the citywide engineering on-call or the architectural on-call services contract. The services that fall under professional services are planning and programming, study and assessment, design, CA and I's, which is construction administration and inspection, and then testing and inspections and job order contract support services. Um, most professional services requested by the departments fall under study and assessments, design, and CA and I, but the other professional services are also utilized quite often. Aviation's large, large projects typically start with planning and programming or study and assessment so that they're able to gain the understanding that the project needs in order to move into the design services. For construction services, there are four services, construction manager at risk, job order contract one and two step, design build and design bid build. We don't typically have very many design build advertisements, a couple per per year, but those are starting to increase also. The design and CMAR services are most often procured at the same time with or without interviews. And as Candace had mentioned, that when there are the CMAR services along with design, they wanna be able to work in concert um, to bring the, the project to fruition. Next. The methods used for solicitations is the development of a request for qualifications, and this is used for professional services, job order contract one step, and the first step of the job order contract two step process, a little confusing there, and design build and the construction manager risk services. Uh, next, uh, if a project requires it, the request for proposals is used for the job order contract two step procurement, which this is the second step in the job order contract process, that includes pricing. And then we also have invitation for bids, which is used for design bid build projects that contractors submit bids on a line item or a lump sum bid project. And the guidelines that design construction procurement follows are the Arizona Revised Statutes, Title 34, City of Phoenix Administrative Regulation 3.25, as well as the Phoenix City Code. Next. 
Prior to an advertisement, there are several ways to get some uh, City of Phoenix project knowledge to be in the know. You can meet with project managers at any time prior to any project uh, before it's out for advertisement. Once it's out for advertisement, everything, all discussion is cut off with PMs and or anybody within uh, the city. Uh, you can also attend uh, networking events, join organizations, and review the city's capital improvement program for uh, projects that are, uh, that are listed and in the future. Next. For your reading pleasure to see what the city has planned out for the 2022 through 2027, you can view the city's five-year CIP budget accessible at this link. Next. And of the approximately 475 page CIP, each department lists out program dollars. Then there is the associated projects and budgets further defined in the CIP. And you can see that aviation, public transit, street transportation, water and wastewater have the largest CIP budgets. Next. Candace touched on these also. So you know that it's important for um, both design and construction procurement side of things, as well as aviation's department side of things. So SOQ submittal tips. It's very important for you um, to review the project requirements, the project description, scope of work, and the RFQ criteria and other content. <clears throat> Attend the pre-submittal. This is your only opportunity to be in front of the PM and to be able to directly ask questions of the PM. <coughs> Excuse me. Attending the pre-submittal meeting is also a good way to know who's interested in the project. And if you don't have the prerequisite experience, try partnering with another firm. On your submittal, it's very important to be clear, concise, and complete. You heard that from Candace also. And remember that the selection panel could be reviewing a dozen or so SOQs. So when you're uh, preparing your SOQs, your, your response, Ask yourself, does my SOQ respond to what has been asked for? Is there just a bunch of useless words? Is there anything that I can add that I know would be of interest to the panel and successful to get the project? Be sure to proofread it. You'd be surprised what gets left in or referenced from a previous submittal. We've seen many times we have the experience and knowledge, Tempe, or insert any other agency is looking for. Um, it's very important when submitting through the Procure Phoenix portal not to wait until the last moment. Nothing can be accepted after the due date and time. Very often a firm may have issues uploading documents for various reasons. And if you try to call the contract specialist, they might be on another line with someone else also trying to get their problems resolved. Next. <laughs> Thank you. Um, these are tips and tricks for SOQs to ensure your submittal is put together correctly, that it's acceptable, and is likely to score competitively. Only use black font. It really does show up for the best, but it is your discretion to go ahead and use, you know, colors for text or graphs, charts, whatever you feel that is necessary, again, to make sure that you're successful. Confirm with your references that they have submitted via email. You can also contact the contract specialist that they can tell you how many has been received, but they cannot tell you who has submitted the references for you. And then proofread and spell check. Have someone else read through your SOQ before submitting. And be careful of cut and paste because that's where you can really end up with um, errors, duplicates, or even missing sections. Do not use external links or QR codes. The selection panel will not utilize them at all. And as mentioned before, follow the order of the RFQ criteria. Visually tell the, your firm's story. Try not to be text heavy, lighten up on it, reread it, um, take out anything that is not necessary to be in there. And update your vendor registration whenever you have a name or other information changes. <clears throat> Next. These are bid submittal, the tips for your bid submittal. 
And so we want to ensure that you have a thorough understanding of the project by reviewing the plans and specifications and that your bid is not disqualified for failure to submit properly. Be sure to submit as instructed all required bid documents on the day of the bid, as well as bid documents due post bid. Attend the pre bid meeting, just like the pre submittal meeting. This is your only opportunity to be in front of the project manager and in this case, the designer of record to be able to directly ask questions. And very important when dropping off at the bid box, don't wait until the last moment. Bids must be dropped into the bid box by the due date and time, and they cannot be handed to the contract specialist at all. <clears throat> Next, please. Your response to the RFQ is your chance to really wow the panel with your knowledge and expertise. We certainly wouldn't want the panel to be looking like this when they're um, trying to score and make comments on your SOQs. This is your opportunity to show what makes you stand out from the competition, what you have become aware of the project, and to be able to really show your approach and anything unique that you have to offer to the approach and or understanding of the project. Panels do not want to see boilerplate responses such as, we are terrific and we can perform everything you want. Instead, prove that you have the experience and knowledge, know the project and services needed, as well as assign the best staff. For interviews, make sure you have the key staff presenting. Panel members don't want to hear from the principal, except for pretty much the opening and closing of the presentation. Your assigned staff is your expertise. And we know that contractors sure don't like presenting, but they can really bring such depth and breadth of hands-on knowledge for when projects are being advertised or um, interviewed for construction manager at risk and or job order contracts. And present in the order of the interview letter that you receive, make sure that you rehearse for continuity and timing, and make sure that the panel knows what you really bring to the project. Next. Whether you're selected for the project or not, <clears throat> get feedback. See what level others perfor have performed at. Be open to the panel members' comments of your SOQ or interview. Panel members are city staff having vested interest in the project or knowledge of the work required, as well as outside consultant and contractors are put on for professional services or construction services solicitations and that your submittal really needs to speak to a variety of panel members' knowledge and background. And I mentioned very early on, become a trained panel member to sit on, in on panels. You'll, be, you'll have this opportunity to be able to get a little bit of a behind the scenes view and knowledge how to better your submittals. Next, please. Okay, so although that this content was quickly gone over, please know that our design and construction entire team is available to you for any questions and guidance. It's been a pleasure presenting to you today, and Candace and I are happy to answer any questions that you may have. The first question, what are your MDBE goals for these projects? Um, for the federal projects, the disadvantaged business enterprise, they are race and gender neutral. Um, so we take what the contractors propose for um, disadvantaged subs and we count that toward our FAA aspirational goal. So we look to encourage those programs. Uh, on a regular basis, we do outreach events through our contractors and um, try and support that in the community. Um, and so again, we're race and gender neutral at this time with federally funded projects, but do encourage as much participation as possible. And we, we do report it and track it for the FAA uh, related to grant funded projects. The small business enterprise is a city um, endeavor and we do still meet with downtown departments to set specific goals based on the work efforts that are uh, contained in our projects. So it varies. I mean, it can vary from eight, nine, ten percent to up to 19 percent, depending on the, the magnitude of the project and uh, the trades that it covers and crosses. 
So I don't know if that answered the question, but let me know. Well, and I'd like to add just a little bit of that. Um, and that's the reason why it is very, very important to attend either pre bid or pre submittal meetings. Because that information is gone over very thoroughly as well as you do have the opportunity throughout um, the procurement process of having contact um, with any of the entities associated with uh, small business or um, uh, the good faith efforts. D Deborah is right. Just to, to caveat to that is our equal opportunity department does participate in every one of our pre submittals. And so they do talk about um, how you fill the paperwork out, submission of the paperwork, what the requirements are uh, at the various steps of the uh, solicitation processes. Next question, where is public information regarding the various grant funding, please? Would this also be found in an FAA site or a specific grants website? That information used to be contained on our um, Arizona Department of Transportation Aeronautics site. Uh, at this time, and FAA does not post it. Uh, F, uh, the ADOT site only now seems to post uh, projects that are funded and have gotten awarded. And um, so if you want to track potential future opportunities, we do through various outreach efforts, try and talk about our program. Um, you also have the ability to go on the city's uh, city website to look at what our capital improvement program is, which includes uh, FAA pro projects as well. Next question. To clarify slash confirm for design purposes to connect and offer design services to incoming concession projects are RFP or RFQs posted through the design and construction division or should we connect directly with the concessions applicant tenant? Second part of that question, design for airport procurement projects is the architect responsible for qualifying the entire AE team for a project or are the engineers solicited separate from the architect? Uh, to the first question that has to do with concessionaires, yes, that is handled through our contracts and services division, uh, which is Michael Hughes. And I'm not sure if Michael already spoke or if he's on a little bit later, but he will talk about um, the, that is an RFP process through uh, his division, not an RFQ process, which we use through the streets department. So all of the concessionaire solicitations are managed through the contracts and services group. Um, second part of the question, uh, no, we, the engineer or design firm, they're responsible for putting their team of sub consultants and any prime subcontractors together that they feel, at least on the contractor side for CMAR, anybody that might be a, a subject matter expert or somebody that could come to the table, but usually on the CMAR side, we're selecting a contractor, a prime contractor. And at the time we're selecting, we don't know the detailed scope, so we don't usually expect them to propose subcontractors unless we've evolved the project to a point where we know we might need some specialization, then that would be specified in the RFQ. On the design side, the designer, the lead architect or engineer is usually responsible for putting their team of subconsultants to together, whether or not you, know, you need mechanical, electrical, um, if it's a heavy civil project, um, drainage, um, maybe different airfield electrics. So that resides or is involved with the architect or the engineer as the prime. Um, so part of the SOQ would be their team proposal. Next question. Is Goodyear new North Apron and TW Connector project procurement for design or construction? The one that was orange, that's the new North Apron and Taxiway A connector will be low bid. It will be construction. It is designed right now. What percentage of DBE participation have you had in the past projects? Again, that kind of depends on the scope of the work. So for instance, Taxiway U is a pretty involved comprehensive project. So we would uh, hopefully anticipate that we could maybe break 10% on that one, maybe 14 or even a little bit higher. Um, 
typical flat work that might be just an apron, uh, we end up ranging between four, six, seven percent. Uh, but we look to you, the prime contractor, to engage subcontractors sub in the community that might be disadvantaged subcontractors and or suppliers. They can be material suppliers or equipment suppliers as well. Uh, and then make that proposal about what you think that you can provide to the project as far as a goal. And we do that working in concert with EOD. That is all the questions at this time. Give me one second. We have a request to see the slide with the upcoming projects, so we are currently pulling that up now. Okay. If anybody has questions about them, just let me know too. There are several slides with the upcoming projects for Phoenix. Um, so we will click through them slowly, but as a reminder, these slides will also be available in 48 to 72 business hours. Those are all the questions we have. Thank you, Candace and Deborah. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you.